um, some question and answer, but I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you for being so brave and sharing this story with all of us. Um, and I'd like to open it up to you guys if you have questions for Shane. Not really. Yeah, well, I just want to first of all say thank you for everyone being here tonight and thank you for putting this on and, and Mark for basically being the one responsible for a lot of amazing things that are happening with this film. But uh, it's, it's an honor to be here, but it's extra special just knowing that in just a few hours, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. You're doing this bad. Awkward. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, usually I'm emotional, but it's like, I, it's just weird that when Tom passed away, when I went to the, trying to go to the funeral service, that I was in Chicago as when it was happening. And so just kind of, you know, bizarre that I'm here now. But, um, so anyway, yeah, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. So. Love you. Any questions from you guys for sure? Yes. I found um, your parents, um, your mother and your father. Your mother and your father um, were, are, <laughs> just. Um, incredible, incredible people, and I think a testament to, um, I think what I found is that's really the way that either there's political change, but then there's very, very personal change, and change on just a family level, on a very intimate level, and um, I think that your parents are incredibly strong people, and they're people who just follow their hearts, just like you follow your heart. Um, I was deeply, deeply inspired. Um, and I love your great-grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you have that tremendous support, and um, uh, just a reminder that this is where it starts, and then from there, it kind of ricochets out. It becomes political, it becomes a movement, but really, it starts with a personal story and a personal connection to a son, to a family member, to a friend. So. Welcome to Chicago. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm very fortunate to have such a supportive family. And um, my mom, just through all of this, she's been so supportive and, and proud of me and it feels really good. And um, Grandma Pat, she said, she's funny. <laughs> um, people always ask about her and they want to know, like, is there a reality show that works and stuff? <laughs> no. I'm like, if that's what you take away from the film, I mean, it's a film. <laughs> But I think that's one very important message to the film, is just how important it is for parents to love their children unconditionally. And that's one of my hopes, is that I hope that for parents who are having a hard time maybe understanding their children, they can watch this and it will just help them to you know, to, to love their children. So, yeah. If they want to yeah, you can maybe stand up. Sure. Uh, my question was, and I don't know if this is something you want to answer or not, but since this film has gotten visibility, uh, has there been any reaction from his family or his friends, the people in that, that area of, of Indiana? I mean, making the documentary, I was really concerned that they didn't want to participate, and we reached out to all of his family members, and there were members of his family who are supportive and who wanted to partake in it, but they didn't feel like they could, and I mean, I get it, it's, it's their family, and they don't want to do anything to, to jeopardize that relationship, but yeah, I haven't heard from them, that his parents, and... I know that a lot of people are reaching out to them, a lot of media outlets, and they're not responding to anyone. So I think that they'll probably just continue to remain silent. Possibly. And I mean, one thing I'm anxious about, you know, the fact that the the film's going to be out there soon, is that I hope that people don't walk away just 
really consumed and focused on his parents. I hope that they walk away seeing the bigger picture because I don't want people to, you know, harass them. And, um, yeah, so I, I do hope that that's not what people end up doing. personal viewpoint, the strength that you're drawing from all the people, especially in this room, just watching your film and being inspired by it. Do can you tell us a little bit how you're feeling as far as the strength that you're drawing from us? Thank you. Yeah, I, I honestly think that so much strength and support that has helped me throughout all of this, even just from posting a YouTube video, is from people that I've never even met before. and it, it's not always easy talking about this and, and sharing the story, but to just to know that there's so many people out there that support me, and and in a way, you know, we call this like the people's film because what's happened to me has happened to so many people, and I never realized how much this has happened before because it's not like they teach us this in high school and you know teach us the gay rights movement. So for me. Yeah, I just like to think that it represents all those people, and I'm just so grateful to have so much support. Because, I mean, there's a lot of hate that's directed towards me, but there's a lot more love, and I'm just grateful. And just to answer to the bigger picture, um, I will go home and sign a healthcare power of fraternity. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. And, you know, there's a lot of people that ask me, well, you had a business, you had a home, why did you not, you know, plan or think about that? And being in our 20s, I wasn't anticipating that something was going to happen. And regardless of whether or not you're gay or straight, that it's, it's so important to have those awkward conversations because you don't think it will happen, and it does. So that's, I'm glad that you're going to do that. I just want to say that I do know that there is a bigger story here that you are being very brave in sharing. But I do want to say on a very fundamental level that I'm really sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, I know that can be hard to put a whole life into two hours, and I was wondering what were some of the things that you really couldn't fit into the film um, about Holland or about your life? The incredible thing about making the film with the director, Linda Blair with Thomason, is she allowed me to be there every day. And and so it wasn't just like me handing over all the footage and she just did what she wanted to do. She really uh, encouraged me to be there, so I felt like it was a very collaborative effort. And as far as like the content, I I feel like for the most part it really does a good job of representing Tom and our relationship. and. You know, Tom was maybe a lot more goofy that, than that comes across, and I'm sure he'd probably be happy that we didn't put a lot of footage in there. But, uh, um, well, I mean, that's a good question, but I really feel like everything's, everything's there. I'm curious if the hospital ever approached you after all this and apologized. Actually, ironically, um, well, no, it's not ironic, but like, uh, like two months ago, a nurse that was there, not that worked in the hospital, not that night, and uh, reached out to me and, and mentioned that, she didn't say the name, but uh, she mentioned that the nurse that she's friends with that works at the hospital was there that night, um, wanted to, to apologize to me, that they heard about the story, and... It's just, I guess that just made me feel really good because, I mean, I wanted to go back to the hospital just to thank the, the nurses that allowed me to finally go back and see him. And when I went back, they wouldn't tell me who was working that night, and they said that they had no right to know. Um, I was like, well, what happens if I just stand out here and, like, you know, wait till they come in? But, um, yeah, so I, other than that, I didn't really... Awesome. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
no, but thank you all again. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you all of you for being here, and I'd like to welcome John Colehep to give us an update on how we're doing on marriage equality in Illinois. Hi, everybody. Uh, and I just want to say thank you all for being here tonight to see this wonderful movie. And thank you to Laura Ricketts, Jeremy, Brooke, and Mark for bringing this together tonight. And thank you, Shane, for coming. Um, I know that when we are fighting for love and commitment in the state of Illinois and fighting for people to have the rights to get married, that it is images like this, it is stories like yours that we're talking about when we talk about the couples in Illinois, the tens of thousands of couples in Illinois who want to get married and express their love for each other. So thank you for showing your, your story tonight. Uh, where are we in the campaign? Well, we've gone through the first week of veto session, and now, as we head into the second week of veto session, we have, since July 15th, made 50,000 contacts to just a group of targeted legislators. That's over 1,000 contacts each, and over the next two weeks, we're going to make another 25,000 contacts. The campaign is big, it's broad, it's from the Wisconsin border all the way down to East St. Louis. And our field organizers are out there all the time. Charlie Resmanoso, who's in the room tonight, has been passing a petition. And if you haven't signed the petition tonight, I know Tracy has some, Charlie has some, and we've got some others in the room, sign the petition. This is a petition calling on Representative Harris and his colleagues to make history and pass this bill in two weeks. We have an opportunity here in the state of Illinois to pass this bill. And through our radio ads, through uh, which most of you probably are not hearing um, because they're running in downstate and African American communities, uh, and our incredible field program and our legislative team working every day to pass this bill. I think, as Greg Harris says, we are within striking distance of passing this bill in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you for everything that you and your team have done. We have a remarkable team here in Illinois at, at Illinois Unites for Marriage trying to make this happen for us, and they've been working night and day. John, I don't know when you get a break, but um, it may be like two weeks. And Jim Bennett, I want to point out Jim Bennett, who's also been working his backside off. Um, and, 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 these guys are working really hard. I want to especially sh thank uh, Mark for helping us put this night together. And Shane, for thinking your, sharing your story. It's not easy to share that, but I can't imagine how many lives you're you're impacting by sharing your story, so thank you. I know you've impacted mine here tonight, so thank you very much. Um, I want to make every single representative down in Springfield watch that. Yeah. that yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should I'll buy, the, I'll buy the DVDs if we can send them to them. <laughs> Mark and I are on this. We're working on it. Um, anyway, so, uh, but I also want to thank um, all of you for joining us here this evening. And um, I think Shane's story is... Um, is um, a remarkable case in point of why we need marriage equality now. Not in January, not in March, not next fall. We need marriage equality now. We should have had it last spring. Don't get me started. We didn't get it, but we're gonna get it soon. We have a real opportunity to get it in the, first, in the second week of veto session, the first week of November, and a lot of people are working really hard and have been working hard to make that happen. And I wanna thank all of you tonight because you're part of that team. We raised over $40,000 with this event tonight. So, um, so again, thank you to you guys. Um, and thank you to all of you for um, helping raise that money. That money is going to go to um, phone calls to the districts of representatives who are still on the fence and haven't committed. 
Um, we heard this week that they're getting more calls from the other side than they are from us. And so John Colehep here made the decision that we're going to double down on our calls then, and we're going to we're going to buy more time to call um, all of those districts. And so with that forty thousand dollars that we raised here tonight, we're going to be using that money to call representatives, to call into their districts, and let them know that um, there are a majority of people in Illinois who are in favor of this bill. And so thank you for the money that you've given tonight, and I'm going to ask you to give more because. <laughs> Yes, we've raised forty thousand dollars. But if we raise another ten thousand dollars tonight, now remember we have two weeks left to make this happen. Really, a week and a half, right? If we raise another ten thousand dollars tonight, that ten thousand dollars can go to be making calls in the districts of five downstate representatives, people that represent people like Tom Bryker and his parents, who are on the fence and they don't know. Should I vote for this bill? I'm undecided. Maybe it's the right thing to do. But I don't know. Some people in my district, they're going to give me a hard time about this. I'm on the fence. I'm hearing more from them than I am from the pro side, the people in favor, in favor of marriage equality. If we raise $10,000 more here tonight, we can reach out to five more downstate representatives and tell them, yes, Illinois wants this bill passed. It's the right thing to do, and now is the time to do it. We need it now. So... Um, we have Nancy Cohn, the great Nancy Cohn, and her staff here tonight um, who will um, be happy to take um, further contributions from you. You can also go to um, www.illinoisunites.org. Illinoisunites.org. Thank you. Um, I don't know why I haven't memorized that yet. But, um, anyway, and make further contributions. And um, we also, uh, what about physical action that people can take? Are there... There are additional, um, aside from giving money... Sign the petition before you leave. Sign the petition before you leave, please. And we have phone banks, volunteer phone banks downtown, mm -hmm. here in Boys Town, in uh, downtown... You can get all this information on the website, correct? Yeah. It's uh, downtown, in Boys Town, in Andersonville, in Rogers Park, in Evanston, in Edgewater, in Oak Park, uh, in Hyde Park, and uh, at the Chicago Urban League, which is at 45th in Michigan. Okay, great. So please give your time and your treasure and your talent um, and uh, help us get this done. It's really on all hands on deck time, but together, this is really within our grasp now. We together can make this happen in the next couple of weeks. So thank you again for coming tonight. Thank you. Yeah, Mark's going to say another word real quick. Um, and thank you again to Shane for sharing your story. So I just wanted to say one last thing that I was thinking about and that Shane reminded me. So it will be available on Netflix as of tonight, after the after the own airing. So right now, text your friends, email your friends and family, tell them it's going to be on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Um, at 9 o'clock is Oprah, an episode of Oprah's Next Chapter, which she wanted to do, when she saw Bridegroom, she wanted to do a conversation about gay in Hollywood, gay in America. Um, so she is doing this conversation with... Uh, uh, Jesse Tyler Ferguson from Modern Family, Dan Bukatinsky, who recently won an Emmy for his work on Scandal, and uh, the very funny Wanda Sykes. So the four of them have a conversation. I saw a little bit of this episode. It's brilliant. It's amazing. And that will be followed by Bridegroom. So tell everybody to tune in to OWN tonight, or set your DVRs, and then it'll be available on Netflix, so we can try to figure out how to make sure everyone's going to watch this. But thank you again. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Laura, Brooke, Jeremy, everybody. Thank you so much. And are we, are we good? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much.